Hey everyone, Nick Belezzo here again, hopeless guitar enthusiast at the guitar apartment. Check out my new Strat. I have here a 1994 Fender Mexican Standard Stratocaster. This guitar was found by a buddy of mine in a dumpster outside his rehearsal space. He took it home in pieces and when he found out uh, that I was building guitars, he's given it to me. So Luke, thank you for the guitar. As you can see, someone must have gotten frustrated with it and went ahead and smashed it. The guitar completely split it apart. I don't have one half of the body, uh, but actually the neck broke off clean. And it is pretty beat up. The frets have been worn to crap. Someone did put a bow nut at one time on there and there's a missing um, key, but the neck is actually in pretty decent condition. It's stable, it hasn't twisted. And I'm thinking I can salvage this and put it on a new guitar. And it just so happens that when I worked as a guitar tech in a music store, I got to keep this Court Strat copy body. We stripped all the parts off of it, and I took the body home. And this is almost the exact same color as and routing as that original Strat, so it'll make a great donor for the neck. So now that I know that the neck is stable, it's not twisted, the truss rod works, I'm going to go ahead and do a stainless steel refret carve a new bone nut and install new tuners on here and hopefully get a brand new guitar. This is going to be my dumpster strat. Okay, first thing is we want to remove the nut. I'm going to take a block to kind of hammer against it. Uh, I wouldn't use something with files in it like I did that was kind of stupid, but just want to knock loose any glue or anything that's in there, pry it free. And then now we're going to apply heat to the frets to help remove them. Now you want to apply heat for two reasons. First, you want to soften any glue that might have been used to, to install the frets in the first place. And also, uh, applying heat helps uh, swell the wood. You add some moisture to it and it softens the wood a bit, makes it easier to remove. So the first one's a little bit chippy. So now we're going to try the second one. And just move the soldering iron up and down to get it hot. And you can see these frets are kind of difficult to remove. They're mashed in there. I'm having a hard time getting those ends up. I have to grab in the middle of the fret which is not ideal and then uh, go underneath it and work away work my way along the fret and then this third one I did dry without applying any heat just to see how it came out and it was a bit tough and I decided to go back to using heat but I just wanted to see how it would react and you can see it has a different look to it so I'm going back to using heat and you can see every two or three frets, I'm going to apply um, some solder to the end of the tip. You always want to have hot solder on the uh, soldering iron. Just work my way back and forth. These are the Stumac uh, flush end fret removal pliers. So you can get underneath there with the flush end. And the end is the pesky part there. You, that's where you're going to get your chips. but. These have just been so difficult to remove and work your way underneath there, but you just kind of work your, your way across the fret as best as possible. So there's the first five frets removed. You can see a lot of gunk, a lot of wear, some chipping happening. So we're gonna have to clean this up later. So applying more solder there. Now you can see I actually have a little bit of a bevel that I filed with a round file to that soldering iron. so it kind of grabs the fret and doesn't skip off onto the fingerboard. It happens still, but at least it minimizes it. And you can see smoke coming up. That's going to be actually the, the glue softening up and some of the gunk that's being released. You see that smoke? I'm just trying to very carefully walk my way with the nippers and safely remove that fret without pulling too many chips out of the rosewood fingerboard. You gotta enjoy yourself like I do when you're doing tedious work like this. It can be quite enjoyable. So I'm gonna show the whole process here, again, putting more soldering on there. You can see the bevel that I filed into that tip and the bubbling at the end, that's the glue and some of the whatever gunk that's coming up that's being released. So you can see it's smoking. This might be a little bit too hot, but I wanna get the wood nice and, uh, nice and like a swelled up I guess to get the moisture out and I try at one end it's kind of difficult so I'm gonna go to the other end and again I I'm having these are flush cut so you can go underneath it but I have to kind of grab 
in the meat of the fret, which causes some chipping, but it's just so mashed down in there, it's difficult. But once I get it going, I can get the flush end of those pliers underneath there and work my way across. But you can see there's little chips that kind of start getting pulled up from the tangs. Um, but you try to tamper them back down with the flush end of those nippers. Work your way across very slowly till you get to the very end. And there you go. Some intense concentration. A lot of equipoise you need here. So again, just going along. Now I've gotten, you know, kind of to the halfway to the halfway point of the neck, so you start to get a feel. It's like playing an instrument. You get a feel for it. You, you see how the wood reacts, see how much heat you need, how much pressure you got to apply, how it's going to work. So you kind of get a feel for things as you go along here. Enjoying myself immensely. Again, applying some solder, working my way back and forth. And just enjoying the process of removing these frets. Something so satisfying about it, I'll tell you. going to speed it up here now I got things rolling getting the frets out applying heat and see some of that smoke coming off of the ends there when you apply the heat bubbling up working the uh, nippers along the end so now we got all the frets removed and you can see uh, yeah it's pretty gunky who knows how long this is sitting in the dumpster and what was done to it even before the guy smashed it but you can see a lot of fingerboard gunk, a lot of chipping, there's stuff left in the slots, glue residue. Uh, I, I've seen worse than this, but um, this is not always unusual to see on a rosewood fretboard like this. So we're going to have to do some, some work here to get this cleaned up before we uh, install the frets for sure. So you see a big chip at the end, you know how I kind of have problems with the ends there. And that's what happens, you lose chunks like that. So now what I'm doing is uh, we're after repair some of those big chips. I'm just taking some of my breath to, to heat up the board and moisten up the fingerboard cheese, wherever the heck that is, the gunk on there, to kind of get it cleaned up to where I've got to drop some uh, super glue down. And we'll come across it later with some more abrasive cleaner once we get these chips filled. But you can see I actually saved one of the chips that I pulled out. You can't always save it, but if you can, save the chip. And we got a little bit of piece of Teflon that I bought from a plastics manufacturer in sheets. I just cut it to size, 20 thousandths, put some water thin super glue in there, hit it with the accelerator, let it dry. It's gonna foam up a little bit when you hit it directly with the accelerator, but it's gonna be covered by the, uh, by the fret, so I'm not too worried. Now I'm going to the other side, and here there's just sort of the fingerboard ends of the slots that kind of get pulled up, and I'm just taking some water thin super glue with a toothpick and a drop, and just tampering them down so they are flush with the board so they don't pull up during the sanding process. It's very important. So making sure they're put back down flush, hitting it with some accelerator, mopping it up, taking it out. And now that we got the chips filled with the super glue and it's cured, I'm just taking some naphtha, which is basically lighter fluid, cleaning out all that fingerboard cheese, all that gunk, getting that off the board so it doesn't load up the sandpaper, making sure we have a clean surface to sand on. And this was actually the uh, truss rod nut, and it, I pulled it out and had all sorts of, I'm guessing, glue and squeeze out on it, and I just wanted to clean it up, make sure it was uh, clean before I put it back in there. I'm going to apply a little bit of Vaseline to the end to make sure it uh, tightens and it's fully lubricated because we want to get this neck as straight as possible before we sand it because we're going to be sanding it level. So I'm putting the nut back in, going to tighten the truss rod and the truss rod does work and that's a, a good thing. So I got a light back there so I can see light seeping through my straight edge when I'm trying to level out the fingerboard. 
So you see I'll put the straight edge on here and there'll still be a little bit of light peeking through so I know it's still bowed a bit and I'm going to straighten it up a bit more. Put the straight edge down. Now it's not going to be a perfect read. I'm going to use the notched straight edge because we have a little bit of pull up on those fret ends when we pulled the uh, frets out of the slot. So I don't want to read the slots. I want to read just the beveled finger playing surface. And uh, you see a little bit of a rock, a little bit of a gap. It's not going to be totally perfect. We want to make sure there's no major bow or twists in it. So I'm going to measure both the middle of the neck and then here I'm measuring the treble end. And I'm going to measure the the base end as well, just to make sure there's no humps or twists. Get it as level as possible, seeing the light that's seeping through there. Now that we got it pretty much level, we're uh, ready to sand. Now, I went straight to a uh, Stumac uh, radius uh, sanding block. I would probably use a sanding beam. That's really what I would use. Uh, I'll, I'll use that method to start out to get it flush first and then go to the radius block but here I just went straight to the block put some pencil on the neck to see where I'm picking it up I don't really need the pencil here but this is 220 stickum paper that I put to the uh, nine and a half inch radius block got the fingerboard uh, or got the headstock clamped down to the table normally I'd like to have this in a jig but kind of just doing it old school in the apartment whatever I have cleaning off the uh, sandpaper with a file periodically trying to keep that block in center, I'm not trying to do this all in one pass, cleaning off the block, cleaning off the uh, dust from the fingerboard and working it down to get a level surface. Not gonna get it totally level because there's some really heavy fingerboard wear here you can see coming through, but we wanna get the basic surface to a nine and a, nine and a half inch radius so we have a nice flush surface for our frets to sit down in. So again, just going over it bit more at a time. 220s, sort of a fine grit, not super aggressive. I could have gone a little more aggressive, but just want to make sure to get a nice level, clean fingerboard surface here. So cleaning off the dust, any debris that's on there. And now I'm taking the uh, slot pick and just kind of going over each slot, cleaning out any gunk in there. Now you want to be very careful when you use this because you can pull up any loose uh, tabs that were kind of loosened during the uh, fret removal process and pull them up and create a new chip. So you want to be very careful, but you want to get little debris and chunks and dust that are in there, go across each slot. We'll have to probably do this again, maybe a couple times before we put the frets in but you want to do it periodically to make sure there's not a bunch of stuff that's packed down into those slots just carefully work that pick across each slot to get all the glue residue and dust and debris that's trapped down in there clean it off so you can see that kids eat free all day every day at steak and shake that's good to know here I'm just saving the rosewood dust in a container so I have it in case I do need to make some repairs later on. I got the actual rosewood from the neck. And now it's looking pretty clean. It's it's level. There's some fingerboard wear on there, but uh, the, the board itself is looking uh, pretty, pretty good now. And even the chips at the end, you can see here, are pretty invisible after we do the sanding. Okay, so before I put any of the frets on, I'm going to try to get a nut kind of rough fit and I looked through all my blanks and I have a pretty curved bone nut right here that um, this board is a 9.5 of course and this nut is actually not exactly but pretty pretty close so what I'm going to do is uh, I went through all of them this one's the closest fit this was actually a little too big which is great it's supposed to be about an eighth an inch so it's a little bit thicker it almost wants to go in there but it doesn't, so I have to shave it down, but that's perfect, so we'll get a nice, good, tight fit. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, before I have these frets on here, I'm just gonna put some of that uh, stick -um 220 grit over the top and use this as basically a radius, radiusing jig on the own neck so it matches the inside curve of the nut slot. So these net blanks, they usually come to vintage fender specs, which is seven and a quarter inch radius, so what we're doing is 
taking that bottom seven and a quarter and trying to match it up with the nine and a half of this kind of modern, more modern style radius neck. And you can see a lot's coming off those ends there. I'm just trying to work them down so it matches that, that slot. All I'm doing is just rubbing it back and forth, making sure it's parallel or perpendicular to the edges of the fretboard, not over any of these divot spots, and just working at it with this 220, periodically just checking it over a nice flat spot, make sure I don't have any gaps in there. Now it's starting to look good. So next thing is we gotta check the uh, actual width of the nut slot. So take a digital caliper, as you see, I have like 122 thousandths on the base side. And I'll even check the treble side just to see how far we have to go. 121, so pr pretty pretty close. And what I'm gonna do is measure the actual nut, see where I'm at. So about 127 thousandths around there. Check the other side even. I'm very precise with this because the nut is a lot of work and I'm, I'm, I'm very anal retentive about making sure my measurements are pretty accurate because if you go a little too far, you could just completely just ruin the nut and you have to start all over. So now I'm taking that 220 grit on a block of uh, granite that I found that's pretty dead level and just taking the uh, taking measurements, the 129 thousandths I still have to go, go down a little bit. So checking each side periodically, running it across the 220 stick them and checking it in the slot, taking the measurements to get it close so it's a nice tight squeeze fit and it's flush on all sides and sits there on its own power. Then I'll take a pencil and mark the treble and the bass sides and the direction of the strings just so I know when I put it in my parts bin how it goes back on when I'm ready to shape the nut after I'm done with the fret work. Now that we have our fretboard all prepped, we can begin doing fret work. We're going to be using Jeskar FW 55090-S stainless steel wire. I would consider it about a medium wire. It's 90 thousandths thick, so it's a little bit thicker than vintage, which is usually 80 thousandths, so it's 10 thousandths thicker. The crown height is 55 thousandths. So once you get it leveled and crowned, do all the dressing, it looks uh, like a medium size wire. This is my second stainless steel fret job, so I'm learning a lot of the techniques of how to work with the wire as I go along. When working with stainless steel frets, you might have to invest in some special tools. I intend on doing a lot of Evo Gold and stainless steel fret jobs, so I did invest in some special tools. These are actually sold through Jeskar's website. They're uh, made by a European company called Summit. This is a fret end nipper and it has two grooves to accommodate different uh, heights of the crown and it cuts it flush with the end of the fretboard. I also got a fret tang nipper. This has a cartridge that allows for different profiles of fret wire. You can change it around by different plates and you slide the fret in and it nips the tang. Both of these are hardened and intended to use with stainless steel fret wire. These are very expensive. I would not buy these if you just intend on doing a few stainless steel fret jobs. I would try to use other tools or other methods. Now to cut the actual long length of the wire and cut the fret ends, I have to use my good old fashioned fret end nippers. Uh, these are the standard Stu Mac ones. They have been working for me. I have to use those because they have the, the overhang on the ends so I can cut the long lengths of wire and snip the ends cleanly. So these will wear out after a while using them with stainless steel, but they're pretty affordable. They're found at hobby stores and hardware stores, and you can just take a normal pair of dykes and then grind the ends flat so you get a flush cut. So I went ahead and already test fit a few frets to begin with. Now my first fret job, I did the hammering technique. And one of the tricks when you fret is to overbend the radius and then hammer the ends in and then hammer the rest home to the radius of the fretboard. However, this proved a problem with stainless steel wire because it's so rigid, when you try to hit one end in, you hit the other end and it pops up and it starts to seesaw and doesn't bend. Knowing this, I decided to bend the wire to match the 9.5 radius of the board approximately, nip the ends, nip the tangs, and press it home with a Stumac 9.5 inch radius call. However, I didn't get the first couple frets to seat properly. 
Another trick is to take the tang and hit it on the end so you bend it down so it seats the end properly. I would not suggest this with stainless steel wire because it tends to kink the fret and pull it out of the slot. So I took the rest of the wire, over bent it to approximately seven and a quarter, maybe a little bit flatter, nipped the ends, installed a seven and a quarter inch call, pressed the ends home, replaced the call with a nine and a half inch radius, and then squeezed the crap out of it. Now I'm getting the frets to sit exactly how I want it. Now that we know how we're gonna work with the fret wire, I'm gonna go ahead with a small triangle file and chamfer the tops of each of the fret slots. This will create a nice bevel that will remove all the fret tang marks. Then I'm gonna go over with my Stumac 10 thousandths uh, fret saw and the curved pick to make sure all the glue and debris is cleaned out of the slots so we have a nice clean empty slot for the tang to sit into. Okay, now I'm just going over every single slot with that triangle file. You can see the frets on the right are the ones that I've already filed. They're nice and straight and clean. And then the ones on the left have the uh, barbs from the uh, fret tang that pulled through the rosewood. So you want to just remove those and uh, you want to make sure there's a little bit of that bevel so there's no hump on the top of that fretboard so that those frets lay clean on the fretboard surface. So now that those are beveled, I'm just going with the 10,000 saw. Very lightly, not a lot of pressure. We're not looking to widen or deepen these slots. We just want to get the glue residue, any gunk that's left down in the slots, out of there. So just going across each one, making sure it's loose. Once it's loose, going back with the pick once again, just to remove any of the chunks and debris. We want these slots completely clear, totally clean, so there's plenty of room for that tang to sit down in. Now it looks pretty clean. Slots are straight and clear of any debris. Now we can actually start cutting the frets. You can see I'm just using the standard Stumac cutting dikes. And it's really hard to cut these frets. You have to really put some pressure on them. Stainless steel is a tough material to work with. And I'm just measuring each one letting a little bit overhang on each side very small amount like a sixteenth of an inch even less maybe i'm going to speed this up here and these uh cutting dikes they, they originally weren't advertised to work with stainless steel now they are saying they will uh they're working pretty good they're holding up for me i think they're going to get chewed up after a while uh but overall they are actually working for just these basic rough cuts here and you can see my neck rest has holes drilled with all the fret slots labeled so i know each fret where it goes. So now here's the fret tang nipper. And I know that they do sell this like the regular like computer casing ones you can modify or Stu Max sells them and they're a lot cheaper, but those are not supposed to work with stainless steel and sometimes they do, but they just break. So this one here, you got that little cartridge, you slide it in sideways and the nipper snugs up to the bottom of the crown. And you press down, again, it's a lot of, a lot of force you got to press down but it nips off that tang pretty clean and you just turn around slide it in to the side and snip it off again so now that I have all the frets cut the length and I've nipped the tangs there's still a little bit of tang mark on the bottom that we need to remove so I actually in the side of my block along with the holes to hold all the frets I notched a little um, slot here with a round file and I hold the uh, fret underneath here, take a small flat file and just start working that tang down. And actually I took my little taper block where I do strat setups where I put block this in the vibrato. I slotted a notch there just to have a little thing to, for the tangs to grab into, hold it down put it in the slot and start filing it away. So we just gotta do this 42 times. Periodically check your work, you don't wanna file into the crown. And what usually happens is when you get past the tang, it sounds different. So it, it has like a, a smooth hollow sound. So you'll know when you get down to the, uh, to the crown.
hollow sound. By the way, if uh, you're new to fret work and you see all these steps, you know, cutting the tangs, filing them down, doing them one by one, and you're like, my God, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Guitars aren't all babes and booze and drugs and, and shows and good times. It's filing tangs down on your fold-out kitchen table. And one thing that I want to stress is when you see all these steps, you cannot half-ass any one of them. You have to do every single one of these steps because if you don't make sure that your frets are pulled cleanly, you don't clean out the slots, you don't file down these tangs, the frets aren't going to seat properly, you're not going to be able to really remove the sharp edges on, um, and, and remove the burr. You have to do all these. You have to have meticulous detail to do all these steps right and take the time and I'm not saying that you can skip out and do things easier and it gets you, you streamline methods as you go, but you have to make sure that all these are done right or you're going to have a really bad playing guitar. Now we've got all of our beautiful frets with the tangs filed down. They're ready to be pressed into the neck. We've got our seven and a quarter inch Stumac call in here. We're going to press them all so we get the ends down flat, then put the nine and a half inch call and go over the whole thing again. So let's get fretting. All right, here's the seven and a quarter inch call, getting those ends flush. Just going over the whole board and I got that uh, neck support call going on there. Now we're switching out that call with the nine and a half radius to match the board. This is just a cheap little Harbor Freight uh, table that I got set up. You can see it bends a lot, but that's what I got for now. Later I'll build a jig. So putting the neck support call underneath there, getting these all flush with the fingerboard. They're pressing in pretty nicely. And at the end you'll see I'll get some books to support the uh, headstock there. Put that last one in. So that's it. All the frets are in. They're looking pretty flush. There's a lot of variation in the fretboard still. It might not be perfect, but uh, overall looking pretty good. Gonna probably drop some glue in the slots a little bit later to secure them. So now to nip the fret ends off. So these are the uh, Summit fret tang nippers that I showed earlier. They are made to be used with stainless steel. They got the two grooves to uh, accommodate for different heights of the fret crowns. And you wanna get them as close to flush as possible. You don't want them to touch. I think I'm touching the board here because I just don't care, the board's already chewed up pretty bad, but you don't want to mar the finish. And I'm just going along the uh, end of the fretboard, nipping all those ends. Now I tried the old fashioned Stumac dykes, but I didn't like the way they felt or looked on there, so I'm going back to these uh, tank clip clippers here. Now the drawback is this is the only thing you can really use this for. You can't cut lengths of wire with it, you only can cut the ends with it, so this is all this, this tool does. And those little bits that pop off, you can see I have the white paper towel so I can see where they're at. You don't want those hanging around. They will mar and chew up your finish like nobody's business. So you want to collect those uh, before they damage anything later on down the line. I'm putting them in that little pit tin there. So now that uh, I've got those tangs pretty much cut flush, uh, I'm just going to file them flush with this fret end block. It's got one that's perpendicular. 90 degree angle and then one that's about a 30 degree angle and this is a very aggressive file I, I think I'm going to make my own out of wood with some uh, softer files on there that aren't so aggressive it's it's even when working slow you want to work slow here it's just easy to slip and jump up onto the fretboard and mar the surface which I, I did do so you want to go slow it's kind of hard to get it going. Once you get it going and get a groove going, it's a little bit easier, but you don't want to go fast. S some areas are going to be tougher than others or longer than others, so you want to concentrate on it. So now that I got the edges flush, I'm just taking some Timbernate mate and filler and packing them into the uh, holes in the end because we nipped those tangs so we don't have any tangs going uh, hanging over the edge. This is nice, so it's going to be real nice and smooth, and we'll just apply some water and some light grit sandpaper and clean those up after it hardens. 
We'll have a very smooth fretboard edge for playing. Hands won't get caught up on any sharp edges. Now we're getting ready to level the fret, so I'm taking that notched straight edge, just checking it, getting it completely straight, because we only want to file on completely straight frets. Checking it again. See, there's a little bit of a hump in the middle. It's wobbling there, so I'm going to loosen it. Take some of that slack. Get it completely straight. And now that it's level, I'm going to take some painter's tape and mask it off. You can see I have to do some custom cuts. I got that block there. I take an X-Acto knife and cut them smaller and put all the little strips down. You don't absolutely have to do this, but I feel it's good to, to mask off that fretboard while you're filing just to make sure you don't mar the fingerboard surface, pull up any finish on the edges, get anything destroyed. So mask it off completely. Any place we're going to file, there's how it looks when it's complete. Now we're going to use our fret end file. I'm going to do a little bit of a roundover style. So you can see I got some frets on the left side I already did, but I'm taking the file into the corner with some downstrokes and rounding it over. I want it to have kind of a semi-rounded look to it. I don't always do this, but I kind of want this look on this guitar. And with stainless steel, it's a, it's a little bit, you know, it's a lot tougher material than working with like a nickel alloy. So it's taking me much longer to do this. You kind of
ends, you want the whole side to have like that pencil thin top and I kind of made that top disappear. You don't want to do that. Now that we got them all crowned, they're going with the uh, Stumac fret erasers. What's great is they kind of file their own slot into the eraser. You can go along lengthwise with the fret vertically, get all those sanding marks. So basically I'm dropping down to a 180 and the idea is I want to do kind of a cross hatch. Uh, we have some file marks from the 380 when we crowned it with a diamond file. And I'm just dropping back to that 180 to try to get those file marks erased. A little bit of a different look to it. Kind of experimenting with this crosshatch technique. Now I just have some regular P320 free... getting all that polish soaked up and then I'm going to take the clean applicator pad and get all that residue out of there. It'll turn black until you get it clean. So here's the shine we got. So that's through all of our grits and the semi-chrome polish and they're looking pretty shiny. It'll be great to play on. Taking that mask off, make sure to pull towards center so you don't pull any finish off the edges. So one of my goals with this project is to use as many of the original hardware and parts from the dumpster strat as possible on the guitar. So here is the original pickguard assembly. Now I was going to put new electronics and pots in it, but I tested this out and everything is working on here, even though one of the ceramic magnets are damaged. So I figured might as well give this a shot and see how it sounds before I put any more money into it. Then I can always replace the pickups with Alnico's or uh, better pots. Now luckily on this quart Strat copy body, the mounting holes and routing match up exactly where I need them to be, so this will drop right in. Also, the bridge on the court is a two point instead of the six point, so I am gonna use the court bridge. But luckily, I just happen to have this guitar fetish solid steel trem block that fits the import spacing. I got bought this years ago for a project that ended up not working out. So I took off the kind of cheapo, smaller block and put this on. Only problem is this uh, channel here for the uh, vibrato block isn't big enough, so I just need to route that out a little bit. But uh, once I get that going, I'll be able to get the neck on here and start doing the setup.
as you can see, I got the guitar with the neck on, the pickguard assembly is in, and I'm kind of doing some rough adjustments. Right now I have kind of a temporary nut in there that I'm using to hold in the high E's just to get some action and set the bridge. Next I'll start cutting the uh, real nut for the guitar. Here's the actual nut. I drew a line on there for the extra meat that I'm just going to file off. Normally I would do this with my belt sander. I don't have a belt sander anymore. So I got to do this the old fashioned way. So I'm going to take a file, get this uh, down to shape pretty quick in this vise here and put it down to that line that's drawn on the top. Here now I'm just setting the outer E strings to get my string spacing. Once I find uh, the position I want, I'll mark the centers with pencil and just file a slight little notch there to hold them in place. And then I'll take my string spacing rule and this is compensated for the different thicknesses of the strings. Once I get it set and get them lined up, I mark them with pencil and take a X-Acto blade, number 11 blade, and just scribe it just enough to to get a little file mark going with just my light 12 thousandths file just enough to get them held in and then once I know they're in the right position I don't need to move the slots over any anymore I can start filing to depth so I'm using my different gauge uh, files I got here stacking some feeler gauges as a depth stop and see I'm kind of filing back on an angle towards the string trees and working them in sort of a V shape down to that depth stop and an angle, making sure I get the uh, proper, proper height on each string. Checking for clearance over that first fret. So I went ahead and filed all the string slots to the depth I want, and I was gonna take it back over here to my vise to shave off the top so the slots weren't so deep and then the file the ends off and get it to have a real nice fit. Uh, but unfortunately, I got a little too excited with my nut filing and I busted my nut. I have a G string here that's too low and it buzzes a little bit now. So what I'm going to do before I file this down and get the end shaping done, I'm going to take a little bit of this bone dust and some water thin super glue and patch that up and let it set and then refile those so they are at the correct depth. Okay, so I'm just taking some of that uh, bone dust from filing the nut down, dropping it into that G slot that's too low, packing it in there. Then I'm going to take some of that water thin super glue with the whip tip, drop it in there. I'm not doing it all at one time, just doing it in layers. I'll take a little more of that bone dust and kind of pack it into that slot. Again, drop more of that water thin in there. And there you see it's patched up and it's ready to be refiled. But first, uh, I'm going to take some of that bone dust that's kind of proud on the ends and file it flush so it sits in the uh, nut slot correctly. I'm going to go back to the top and kind of reshape the nut, going up through my different files from coarse to fine. want to do a little bit of a round over, clean out those slots a little bit as I go, knock down any of the hard edges, round over the uh, front end, the back end. I'm kind of beveling it towards the back where the strings slope down towards the uh, trees. Just going through all the different files here, getting a real nice rounded over, comfortable, professional looking nut. So there it is, a little bit more polished up. Some fine filing ready for refiling. We'll go back to a finer file, bevel it on all sides, take some of this flexible 400 grit, polish it up, get all the fret ends polished, get all those file marks out of it. And take some wet or dry 600 and get all the other sanding marks out of it get a real nice smooth polished sand on it then take my Balin deluxing compound just with some paper tower towels and kind of like a paste wax and get it real nice and shiny it's gonna look almost like ivory so there you go there's the nut almost finished all polished up looking pretty shiny and smooth rounded over on all the corners Install it back on the guitar, prop it in the space, see how the fit is. Now, when I make sure it's it's correct, I'm going to uh, drop some tight bond in there and glue it in there very lightly, but just want to make sure this fits up and uh, everything's in position and, and it looks right. So there it is, all finished and in the nut slot. Okay, now I've shaped the uh, nut and polished it up got the action set where I wanted, intonated the saddles, and the thing's basically done. So as a recap, what we did is we took the dumpster neck, 
did a stainless steel refret, new bone nut, installed vintage style Clouson locking tuners, uh, used this court strat body as a donor, and then installed the two point trim with the uh, stainless steel block. Now besides the tuners and the strap buttons and the original bridge from the court body, all the other hardware is from the original dumpster strat. So the string guide, the jack plate, the whole pickup assembly, including all the pickups and the pots, electronics, the pickguard screws, and even the neck plate on the back. That is actually all from the guitar that came from the dumpster. So I decided to try out the original ceramic pickups, and they actually don't sound too bad. Even the middle pickup is missing half of the ceramic magnet broke off when whoever smashed it smashed it. Uh, but it actually still sounds pretty decent. The pots are a bit scratchy. I could clean them out. I think overall I probably would want to put in better pickups, but for the time being, at least it gets it up and running and keeps the original vibe of the guitar. It's, I wanted to keep the aesthetics that um, it was a guitar that was found in the garbage. A few things that I would still do with it, the neck pocket is a little bit crooked. The neck needs to straighten out a bit, so I would probably shave off a little bit here so the neck would be more in line, the strings would be more in line there. Um, also, I have the trim set up flat, the action pretty low. This could probably use a little bit of a tapered shim to put the neck angle back so I could float the bridge a bit more and get the action a bit higher. But considering I basically got this guitar for free and this is going to be just a practice guitar, I don't know how much more I want to put into it. If I want to put in any more electronics, um, I've already put in more time and labor than the guitar is actually worth. So I think I'm pretty pleased with how it is right now. So everyone, thanks for watching and uh, let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.